Hi everyone, taking a live look downtown this afternoon. Winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories are in place throughout the region. We're anticipating a few inches of snowfall through tomorrow morning. So thanks for joining us first to four. I'm Jane McCarthy and I'm Tom Sherry. Yeah, we've got lots of active weather headed our way. The mountains are going to get pounded and northern valleys also are going to get pounded. Let's head over here right here. We'll show you the winter weather advisory, which includes the Spokane area. Everywhere you see shaded in yellow right here. This is the winter weather advisory in effect now through one, uh, one actually that should be 1 p.m. tomorrow 1 p.m. tomorrow uh, then we're tracking a winter storm warning in effect across northeastern Washington and the panhandle of Idaho three to seven inches of snow in the valleys maybe up to a foot of snow expected in the mountains I think it's going to start out as snow for us here in the Spokane area then change to a snow rain mix possibly overnight but could be slippery uh, this evening uh, for driving around and maybe early tomorrow morning as well there's the approaching weather system as you can see on the Doppler radar lot Lots of moisture moving into the west side of the state. We're now beginning to see the snow now move into areas of central and eastern Washington, the lower Columbia Basin. As you can see, just seeing rain, the yellows and oranges and greens indicate the rain. The white here is what we're talking about, the snow. So we're getting a little bit now in Spokane, not much yet, but you can see a lot of it to the south of us. Uh, we're seeing that. So here we go, snowfall expected. This is today, uh, as well as in the overnight hours. You can see two to three inches of snow in Spokane. Four to six inches of snow possible through tomorrow uh, in the Coeur d'Alene area. Four to six inches of snow in Wallace. Eight to 12 inches of snow possible up in Sandpoint. Colville may get four to six inches of snow. Should not be a big deal out towards Wenatchee and Moses Lake and Othello, although Ritzville could get between one and three inches of snow. And as I said before, OMAC uh, be getting between two and three inches. So an overnight low, pretty close to freezing. Starting out as snow, possibly changing to rain in the overnight hours. We'll look for rain and snow again tomorrow. Daytime high of 39. By the afternoon, I think it will dry out in the Spokane area. Uh, and we'll look for wind gusts at times up to 30, 35 miles an hour. So it is definitely going to be uh, blowing out there. For the weekend right now, it looks mostly dry. Saturday and Sunday, I've got uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies. Overnight lows in the upper 20s. Daytime highs expected in the upper 30s with some of that patchy freezing fog. But in the meantime, get ready for a slippery night tonight and possibly again tomorrow morning. All right, thank you, Tom. Over the weekend, Spokane police arrested two men who they believe were involved in a drive by shooting in North Spokane. So those suspects made their first appearance in court this morning. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley joins us live from the courthouse with the latest. Court documents say the victims living at the North Atlantic residence positively identified who they believed was the shooter and accomplice, and they were identified in court today as Andrew Buchanan and Christopher Piper. Now, Spokane police initially reported several hours after officers cleared the scene of the fight, they were called back at the residence for a reported drive by shooting. However, court documents make it appear as though the fight and the shooting happened all at once. Now, I've reached out to Spokane police to clarify, but have not yet heard back. Court documents say Buchanan was with Piper when they went to the victim's home and that they all knew each other. The victims told police Buchanan was upset his sister had gone to jail after breaking the front window of the victim's home. They told investigators Buchanan threatened to kill them and saw him carrying what looked like a Glock pistol. He even told them he had a bunch of other guns in the car. The two men eventually went back to the car outside the home, and that's when the victims say they saw Buchanan point a gun at the house and shot at it four to five times. No one inside was injured. Both suspects appeared in court for charges including drive-by shooting and first-degree assault. Docs say Buchanan has a previous felony conviction for vehicular assault last February, along with other felony convictions for attempt to elude and felony hit and run. Now, a judge set Buchanan's bond today at $250,000, as well as setting Piper's bond at $100,000. Reporting outside the Spokane County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Crumb 2 News. Thank you, Amanda. Well, there does not appear to be a compromise on the horizon that will end the now 32-day-old partial government shutdown. That means hundreds of thousands of federal workers will soon miss another paycheck. Senate Republicans introduced a bill to end the, uh, the shutdown, including three years protection for some refugees and DACA recipients. It also includes the more than $5 billion for a border wall. The proposal outlined by President Trump that we'll consider here in the Senate 
is the only proposal, the only one currently before us that can be signed by the president and immediately reopen the government. We heard what the particulars were in it, and it was a non-starter. Democrats are demanding the president reopen the government before negotiations on border security can begin. The House is expected to vote this week on multiple spending bills and provide $1 billion in border security funding. It appears the Senate, though, will not vote on that plan because President Donald Trump says he will not sign it. Because of the ongoing shutdown, we're seeing a lot of social media chatter urging unpaid federal employees to help end the government shutdown by going on strike. So is it that simple? Can federal workers just walk off the job? Well, our Verify team turned to history and law books for the answer, and our researchers found a critical piece of legislation called the Taft-Hartley Legislation Act of 1947. It bars federal employees from going on strike, no exception. The legislation has been put to the test before. Back in 18, 1981, rather, thousands of air traffic controllers went on strike to demand better pay and shorter work weeks. President Reagan responded by firing more than 11,000 of them. So we can verify no, federal workers unhappy with the shutdown cannot legally go on strike. And if they do hold an illegal walkout, it might go very badly for them and not accomplish much in the end. Mm. The U.S. Supreme Court is allowing the Trump administration to enforce its ban on transgender military service members. So this ruling comes as challenges to the policy continue to make their way through the lower courts. Whitney Ward joins us with the latest. Good afternoon, both of you. So the Supreme Court voted five to four to allow President Donald Trump's administration to restrict transgender military service. Now, this is just temporary, though. The justices allowed the ban to go into effect while cases challenging it are moving forward in the lower courts. So at its simplest, the policy prohibits anyone from serving who identifies with a different gender than their biological sex. Now, the policy does make exceptions for those who are already openly serving or those willing to serve, quote, in their biological sex. Now, challenges to this policy have had mixed success so far in the lower courts, as judges all across the country have issued injunctions blocking it. Now, some people say the policy is just too complicated since people who identify as transgender already openly serve, and they can continue to do so once those injunctions are lifted. Now, those who seek to transition or serve openly after that risk, do they after that, they do risk discharge. Now, most recent estimates show there are more than 15,000 transgender individuals on active or reserve du duty right now. The Pentagon released a statement today reassuring that this policy is not a complete ban and troop members who identify as transgender will continue to be treated with respect and dignity. Jane. Whitney, thank you very much. In 